Ooh. Hello and welcome to my new office. <laughs> this is what I was talking about when I was talking next generation webcam software. Um, use the webcam, grab the guy out of wherever he lives or works and stick them in a boardroom where everyone can meet and exchange documents and have a good chat. So this is what it is. Um, I'm going to try and keep this nice and snappy. Uh, I've not used much of the SDK. I've been writing my own bits and bobs just using the depth and colour data and then extrapolating all the functionality that I need myself. For example, the head tracking. Um, it's actually a real-time head tracking. There's no, I'll calculate it now and then give you the data later. The only reason it's not faster than this is that I need to optimise the uh, the huge nested loops that I'm using to crunch all the depth and colour data. But I'll be back up to 30 frames per sec once I get it optimised. So that's head tracking. You've also got this kind of head tracking, so you can actually look around, so see who's sitting next to you or opposite you or whatever like. But there's something else as well. You've probably seen the skull zipping about. Look, I'm looking in that corner, and that's the... Uh, a gaze. So if I look this way, he's over here now, and back over there. Now it isn't pinpoint. You know, it's not reading eyeballs at the moment. It's just um, the, the the quadrants. You know, you're looking down, looking up, looking left, looking right. Um, but there's a lot you can do with that, and no one's actually done that before. So that'd be a really cool thing to implement into some software. 3D manipulation. I spent many many hours on this, basically stitching the meshes together, texturing them, making sure that it's separate, as you can see, nice 3D, but it's actually not really, you know, making it onto one big blob, it's cutting up and then actually creating independent 3D blobs, you know, so you can reach out onto the desk and move things around. Um, you've also got, um, not in this one, but I've actually done some research into voice over IP, tried to use Google Talk, nah, so I went on to something called Linphone, which is cross-platform, open source, great documentation, and I tested it on four devices, two Windows, one Mac, and an iPad, and it won't really run great, and I've got all the source code. So that'll probably be for next week, so that's going to be fun to see that integrated. And now I'm going to show you the debug version of this software. Debug one. See the white spikes? They figure out where each side of the head is, where the shoulder is, averages the left and right side of the head, and then it gets a very good X and Y center position for the head. And that allows me to track at full frame rate left and right. Debug number two. Notice the rather attractive black and red mask. Well, what it actually is, it figures out, if you look close, where my nose is. And then using a clever system of filters and multipliers, the nose tells me which direction I'm gazing, even up and down with some jiggery poker. So this is version one of gaze detection, but lots of potential because you can see wonderful fidelity in the depth data. Finally, you may have noticed the fuzz around my exterior. That is actually depth data fluctuations. I find it very difficult to combat. I tried to smooth it out, but it didn't work. So what I'm going to do is keep it. I'm going to make it a feature. It's about me being a hologram in a conference meeting. And I did it five hours of coding to no avail. So I'm keeping it. I rather like it now. It makes me look like the holographic man. So I'm going to prettify it, make it look better, but I'm not trying to defeat it anymore. So the fuzzy stuff stays. So it's been 29 hours non-stop coding. So I'm going to have a drink, which I conveniently kept out of shot. And I shall bid you farewell, and I look forward to another, probably more enhanced virtual video next week. Until then, cheers.